I am more nervous than a long tail cat in a room full of rocking chairs, y'all. <laughs> my hand, palms are sweaty. My paper's wet right now from sweat. I'll tell you what. I was going to preach about a disobedient youth, but half of them showed up, so I can't do that anymore. <laughs> but in all serious, the, seriousness, Colossians chapter 2 and in verse 6. This uh, afternoon we're going to look and dive into the topic of looking to Jesus. Looking to Jesus. Oftentimes I ask myself as a minister, as a child of God, as a youth pastor, am I always looking in the right places? Uh, sometimes I... I'm, I'm, I'm going to take this off it. Sometimes I ask myself, and I, and I look, and I look around me, and I ask myself, am I looking into the right places, the right sources for whether or not I'm doing what I'm supposed to do as a child of God? There's so many different seminars and different uh, people who are experts on every topic there is, but when it comes to being a child of God, when it comes to God's people, when it comes to God's churches, there's only one place to look. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. So I want to ask you this morning, where are you looking? Are you looking to Jesus or are you looking to man? And you may ask yourself, I'm a minister of God. I'm a, a God-called preacher. Why would you ask me that? There's plenty of people in the Bible who weren't always looking to where they were supposed to. So in Colossians chapter 2 and in verse 6, if you look with me, the Bible declares, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. If you would, please bow your head. Dear God, I come to you. Just thank you so much for this opportunity just to stand here today, dear Lord, just to break open a portion of your word, to talk, to it, to talk about it, dear Lord, and just to be a vessel for you. I pray that you hide behind your cross, dear Lord. Just be with me. Remove my nerves, dear Lord, and my anxiousness, and allow me just to be used for you. I ask all this in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. The first thing we're going to look at is receiving Jesus Christ. The first thing I will look at, too, is into our life. There's different ways and different <coughs> things that we can follow when, when we look at our own lives. Different routes we can go. Uh, if you're a, a God-called preacher, you probably had a plan before God called you to preach. I had it all laid out. I was going to go play college football. I was going to not make the pros, but my college was going to be paid for. And that's how my life was going to go. I was going to work as a diesel mechanic, and that all changed. God had different plans for me. So have you received Christ into your life? And I don't mean salvation, if you would. I'm not talking about accepting Him into salvation, but allowing Him to control your life. Allowing Him to be the one who is the front focus, the fore focus of everything that you do. The Bible says, as ye have therefore received. You see, this means, ye means you. As you have therefore received. I can't make you receive Christ into your life. I can't make you make that choice. Your mother can't, your father can't, your pastor can't. Nobody can. It is a choice you must make. You must look at your life and say, look, I cannot do this without God. If you've ever tried for any amount of time to do it without God, you realize you can't. Yeah. Jeremiah didn't even finish the verse he was talking about in the, in, in the, in, in the book of Jeremiah when he said, but I couldn't. I was going to go away, but I was weary with forbearing. I could not go. I had to preach. I had to do it. So ask yourself this morning, have you been living your life without Christ? Without Christ as your focus. Again, we're not talking about the topic of salvation, but allowing Him to control your life. Allowing Him to lead you. Allowing Him to be the one who you're following after uh, if any of you grew up in church, you probably saw all the Bible cases with the little sand and the water and the footsteps. Following the footsteps of Jesus. It's one of the first Bible lessons I ever heard about was following in the footsteps of Jesus. But still, still as I stand here at 20 years old, which I know is not old, I still have that same principle in following in His footsteps. Following in where He wants me to go. You see, there's a lot of different paths that people would want me to go. My mom didn't want me to quit football. And that, that was nothing against the ministry. She just wanted me to play football. And I understand that. She loved watching me play football. I had family members that said that what I was doing was insane. My dad wanted me to play football. But when I accepted the call to preach, my parents didn't care anything about football. They cared about my walk with the Lord. But it's not everybody has parents like I do. Some of you may have had parents who they were like, ministry, a call to preach. We barely even go to church. Why would you do that? Why are you going to focus on that? You're going to waste your Saturdays. And, and I remember in, in, uh, <coughs> we had a college day. 
And uh, everybody had a little piece of paper that said what they were going to school to do. And everybody's paper was, well, you're going to be this and that. Mine was, I'm going to learn how to be a preacher. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, or, no, it's, it's, I'm going to learn to be a preacher. And while, yes, there's some truth to that, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm already a preacher. i got to learn how to do it, absolutely, but I'm already that. And you must understand, the Bible tells us this for a little side note, the world does not get what we do as men of God as preachers. They don't understand it. They don't, they don't live the life we live. They don't walk the walk we walk. Right. So we must understand that if we're going to live for Him, if we're going to serve Him, we must receive Him into our life. We must understand, we must make that choice in ourselves to follow Him. We must realize that we also must accept Him and receive Him as our Lord. And again, I'm not talking about salvation. I'm not talking about receiving Him as our Savior, but as our Master. As the one we follow. As the one we say yes sir to. As the one that we look after. You see, there's a lot of different people who claim a lot of different names. And they claim all of these things. Well, I, I found something new. I found something no one's ever seen before. I've seen it my first year of seminary. I was bombarded with people telling me time and time again, oh, you've never seen this. And I don't mean my instructors. I mean other classmates. Oh, if you see this, see, they don't teach that up there. Oh, you're not going to see that up there. This is only right here. The Bible doesn't change, does it? The Bible has no, has no errors. It has no mistakes. There's not something that was once not there that is now found. But we must understand that I love every single one of you. But you're not my Lord. You're not my master. My mom and my dad are not my master. They're not the ones who I follow after, not the ones I, I live after. I've been blessed that I have a father and a brother in the ministry. They're not my masters. I don't serve them. I don't worship them. I don't walk after them. But at times I have. A young man in the ministry, I'm like, man, my dad's in the ministry. I'm, I'm going to look after what he says. And I realize that my dad don't know everything. None of us do. But if I'm just following and looking after what dad says, what kind of preacher am I? A dad called preacher. If I'm just looking at what my brother says, what am I then? I'm a brother called preacher. I'm not a God called preacher. Amen. So ask yourself, who are you looking to? Who are you receiving? That word receiving means to have alongside. Who is alongside you as Lord? I'll tell you this. I'm going to fail you if I haven't already. I'm a man. I, I, I'm a sinner. I, I have a flesh. I'm going to fail you. Christ never has failed me. He never will fail you. Amen. You see, the God of Genesis is still the God of Matthew and is still the God of Revelation and he's still the God of eternity. Right. He's the only thing that's never changed. Right. Oh, there's been all these philosophies come out. There's been all these things that they pop up and everybody's like, this is it. And it falls to the wayside. Jesus Christ has never turned his back. Jesus Christ has never left. God's never deserted a single person that was his child of God. We've deserted him. We've left him. We've turned our backs on him. And he's the only person in our life that the love that he has for us is unconditional. Amen. You say, well, doesn't your mother love you unconditionally? If I wasn't her child, she wouldn't love me. If I was some random person, would she love me? I don't know. No matter what I've done, no matter how much I've turned my back on Christ, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, right? While we were yet sinners, while we were not even on the side of God, while we, not only that, we weren't just on the side, we hated God. He died for us. Amen. Not only as we receive Him in our, to our life and as our Lord, we receive Him as our God. The Bible declares, so walk ye in Him. So since we've received Him, since we follow Him, we must walk with Him. And that word again, receive, means alongside, which means that I'm not letting God go ahead and I'm saying, hang on now. I'm not hesitant, but as long as Christ is moving, I'm moving with Him. Oftentimes we like to sit here and we like to let God go ahead and see what, well, maybe God's going to figure it out for me. I mean, God's wanting us to walk with Him. Christ said to take my yoke upon you. That means that we're together in this. He's walking side by side with me. And that's the Master I serve. But I must accept Him as my God. I am to walk in Him. Again, this is a choice. You don't have to. You don't have to follow Him. I don't care what the Calvinist says. You didn't have to accept Him. But because you did, because you received Him, you then must walk with Him. And that is a choice that if you decide, well, I'm not going to walk with God, I'm going to go my own way, you'll find out real quick that that's a miserable life to live. You see, there's a lot of great men 
I could list and list and list all these great men that have gone before us. Men who have died for the cause. Faithful servants of God. But they're not our God. Because every man written in a history book, and even though they may have been faithful, Paul had flaws. Peter. All of these people, all the, the men who made, everyone mentioned in Hebrews, in the Wall of Honor, the, the Hall of Fame as we call it, they had flaws. They're not our God. Christ is. And people say, well, well, Paul said to follow me. But what did Paul say? Follow me. Because I follow Christ. Amen. That's our God. Christ is our God. Amen. Next, we must see that not only we should receive Jesus Christ, we must be rooted in Jesus Christ. Verse 7 says, rooted and built up in Him. Think about a really big tree. All right? Think about that as we go through this. If we are rooted in Christ, if we are built on Him, that means we have a solid foundation. If you want to see a tree that has no water, go look at the tree in front of Romans in downtown Minden. That tree is dead. <laughs> as much as I've watered that joker, as much as Jason and Mark have, that joker is dead. You want to know why? It has no water. Right. Proverbs tells us that a tree planted by the water will what? Flourish, will grow. It'll have what it needs. So just as a root on a tree seeks and it finds and it looks for everything to get that water, we must be the same way. But a good solid root system can produce a good solid tree. A really tall tree doesn't have really tiny roots. And a, and a really small tree don't have big roots. If our roots are in the right place, just as a tree is finding the water, if I'm finding where I need to be with Christ and I'm searching and I'm building my entire ministry on Jesus, the tree will fall. The growth will follow. You want to know who increases our churches? It ain't me. It's God. Amen. You want to know who gives the increase when it comes to the blessings in my life? It ain't me. It's God. Amen. And I may faithfully serve Him, and I may serve Him, but the blessings are not from me. My treasures are not from me. Nothing I have in my life that is worth anything came from me but God. Amen. We must be built on Jesus Christ. Next, we're going to look had established by Jesus. And established in the faith. See, just as we can choose who we walk in, we choose who we put our faith in. And so you may ask yourself, well, why read after this person and that person? Be careful on that. We'll talk about that in a minute. But who has established you? That word established means firm. Where do you have your foundation in? And again, we just talked about the only place our foundation should be in is in Christ. Christ. If you put your trust and your faith in anything else, <laughs> in world, trust me, there's been people from time past that have put their faith and trust in all different kinds of things, and they failed. My faith and my trust should only be in one person, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. No matter where we look, no matter what people say, no matter what new philosopher comes out, no matter what, what so-and-so says, or this guy said this, this guy said that, Jesus Christ is where we must be established. Next, we must be taught by Jesus. Next, it says, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. When it comes to what I'm supposed to do as a child of God, there is no place to look other than Jesus Christ. He is our standard. You see, if I use somebody around me, a, a fellow brethren is my standard, I'm going to fail God. If I'm looking at, even at Paul and I say, this is the standard I need to live up to, I'm going to fail. There's only one standard. There's only one person we should look to. There's only one person that we should guide our entire life after, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll fail you. You'll fail yourself. Your pastor will fail you. You must put your faith, your trust, and your reliance upon Jesus Christ. Amen. Which brings me to my final point. And in verse 8 we see, Relying on Jesus Christ. We must rely on Jesus Christ through false doctrine. Verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Sadly, we've seen people come through this seminary, and most of them don't make it long, with man's philosophy. With man's wisdom. Men die. Men go away. God doesn't. And the funny thing about it, that it's, it's, it's honestly sad is we sit here and we find this new person. I remember the first time I found out about David Guzzi. I, man, I looked at that, I'm like, that guy knows something. I'm, I'm, my first time ever looking at a commentary, I'm like, this guy's got it. And then I come across a couple of verses, I'm like, this guy does not have it. This guy is wrong. This guy's missing some stuff. And I remember the first time I heard about a guy called Paul Washer. 
And I'm like, man, there's a lot of people talking about this guy. Let me dig in and listen to what he has to say. That guy has flaws. Lots of them. We all have flaws. We all have problems. So no matter the false doctrine that's coming, no matter the things that are coming, there's one person we can rely on through all of it. That's Jesus. Amen. The teachings and the true teachings of this Bible have not changed. Uh, they don't go away. The true teachings stand. You want to know why the, the, the Baptist is the longest standing den denomination, even though we were, we were called Baptists for a long time? You want to know why? Because it's the only teaching that's true. Right. You see, everybody else is derived from some man's name. We've got Calvinism. We've got Mormonism. We've got, or I don't even know if Mormon's after a guy, but we've got all these different names of people following man's idea, man's belief, man's theories, and where do they end up? Toss it to the wayside. That's right. Why do they call it? Well, we're, we're, we're reformers. We're bringing, we're bringing a teaching back that, that was gone. <coughs> true, true teaching of God's Word is never left. Right. It never will. Right. It'll never go away. We must rely on Jesus Christ through false doctrine. We must rely on Jesus Christ through man's tradition. That kind of hits the same point, but, but, uh, but the writer here says, after the tradition of men. There's lots of tradition. There's lots of things that, that man relies on, that man guides. And to go over very briefly, uh, to get to my last, my last little sub-point, is we can't follow just what man says. Right. Just because man says, well, this is the way we've always done it, does not mean it's biblical. Right. Next one we see finally, through worldly principles, after the rudiments, and I promise you that word wrong, of the world, and not after Christ. That word there means principles. So principles we see is that when the world says that abortion is health care, we say what? It's murder. When the world says homosexuality is love, we say it's abomination. When the world says pedophiles, which is sickens me, are just minor attractive people, what do we say? We ought to tie a, a millstone around them and toss them into the ocean, all right? right? When the world says it's okay and the Bible says it's not, we must find a place to stand. Man. And you know what? You know, you know, I'm not going to soapbox here, but you want to know what the biggest problems in America is? We have sat back and we have watched as Satan has taken over, and now we see, oh, it's bad. And now we're trying to fight, but society's gone so far that we're fighting from behind. We're trying to reach them. We're trying to catch them because they're so far away. And the further we get from, from, from the closer we get to the Lord Jesus coming back, the further society's going to get. But we must understand that we are not to follow worldly principles. Just because even a man who holds a Bible says it's Bible does not mean it is. Amen. I think about the church of Berea. They search the scriptures daily. Why? To prove that what Paul was saying is true. If you just sit, even in seminary class, and listen to somebody talk, and you're not trying to find where the scripture is to prove that, then you've got issues. Now, that's what I love about going to seminary at LMBIS, is when they tell you something, they give you the verse to back it up. And that's what I like, is because I'm not being deceived, I'm not being led astray. The worldly principles are not coming into here. We're allowing the Word of God to try us and to, to show us what we're supposed to be. We must not follow worldly principles. We must rely on Christ through that. In closing, I want to tell you this. If you can quote man's books more than God's Word, you've got a problem. One of the things that breaks my heart is when men of God quote men more than they do God. We must understand, yeah, there's a lot of good writings out there, but it's not God's Word. When we're more studied on a topic that has no way for eternal salvation, when we're more studied on something that's man's opinion rather than God's Word, we've got a problem. And we see this a lot with music. You can play a song that you knew a long time ago, and someone starts playing it, and what, you remember the words like it's there. If we treated the Word of God like we treat everything else out there, how do we start remembering some stuff? So in this ministry, as you go, as you live your life for Christ, look to Him. Rely on Him. Receive Him. Be rooted into Him. Christ should be the forefront and the focus of everything we do. Whether we're in youth work, whether we're a, 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 a preacher of God's Word who's, who's idle, who doesn't have a position right now, whether you're a church member, whether, whether, whether a, a new person in the faith, Christ is where we look. I love every single one of you. And you all mean a lot to me. 
But we all have to look to Christ. Right. So in closing, and, and the last thing I want to say is rely on God. Amen. Allow God to take care of it. Because the more you try to fix it, the more you try to make it better, the worse off it will be.